Hey everyone, Wazoo here. Do you find yourself switching between SDL2, SDL3, and Raylib all the time, or is it just me? If that's you, then maybe stick around for this video. We'll go through setting up each one within CLion using CMake. All right, let's get started. So here I am at the Create New Project screen for CLion, and you can choose either the C++ or C executable. It doesn't really matter which. I'm going to go with C. First, we'll drop in some Raylib specific code, and then we'll go ahead and look in the CMake lists file to set that up. Okay, so we'll just need to include Raylib.h. And of course, we'll be seeing a lot of red underlines because we don't have Raylib installed. So we create a window 800 by 450. We give it the title Raylib. And then we start our loop where if the window should not close, then do our drawing, clear the background to sky blue, and then keep going. All right, let's open up make list.txt. And we're using the C standard 17, and this will be a different flag for if you're using a C++ project. Let's go ahead and start adding to it. All right. So first we're going to need to include something called fetch content. By the way, this is all up on GitHub in a gist that you can just easily cut and paste into your own projects. But I thought it'd be cool to go through this. All right, so we can create a function within CMake that'll pull down a dependency for us from GitHub. For an argument, we'll take in the library name we're looking for, the git URL, and the git tag. We use something called fetch content declare, and we want to use, we want to drop in that lib name that we defined. And then the first argument, or second argument, is the git repository of the git URL. And then we want a git tag defined as the git tag that we've passed into this function. And then a git shallow set to true, and a git progress set to true. Okay. And then we have to use a function called fetch content underscore make available. And we pass in our lib name. And that's it for this function. And function. Okay, and then now we can make use of it. Set a variable for lib one called raylib. And then we can use our familiar find package with lib1 and then set the next argument to quiet so if not lib1 underscore found then we have to go ahead and fetch it using our new function so include dependency and we're passing in lib1 as an argument and then the git url which is https github.com slash raysan Five slash raylib dot git, and we want the five point zero git tag. Okay, and if we'll close that off, and then we will add executable. Okay, that looks all right, and then we need to target include directories of project name, which is hello raylib with cmake. So you'll have to replace this with your own project name. Uh, private. And then we want to include the raylib include directories. And then finally, target link underscore libraries of hello raylib with cmake private and lib1 which is Raylib right here. Okay, so we're letting CMake know to try and find the Raylib dependency using find package. If it's not there, then use our fetch content to pull down the package from GitHub and then make it available in our project and link to it below here and away we go. Okay, and if we run it, here we go. We get our familiar Raylib console logs coming up and our screen coming up. And there you have it, that's all you gotta do. All right.
Okay, now we're going to set up the same thing with SDL2. We're going to create a new project for it. And I'm, I'm going to make it a C executable, but you can use C++. It really won't matter for what we're doing. We've got our familiar entry point from the default project template. Let's go ahead and clear out printf. And let's drop in some SDL code. So in this one for SDL2, we're going to include SDL image and SDL TTF which is the true type font support. So here, what we're doing is we're initializing video. We're creating a window and renderer, setting it to 800 by 450, which is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. We're initializing SDL image. We're initializing SDL TTF. And then we're going into our familiar SDL loop where we're just listening for the escape key to quit out of everything. And we're doing the same thing we did in the Raylib example, where we're sending, we're clearing the back buffer to the sky blue, and we're clearing the renderer and then presenting the renderer. And here we are cleaning everything up. All right. So we're going to be including three libraries here, the SDL2 library core plus SDL2 underscore image and SDL2 underscore TTF. Okay. So we've got everything set up in our main.c. Let's open the CMake list file again. Okay, so we're going to include fetch content. That way we can use the fetch content function functionality of CMake. We're setting up a function here named include dependency with a first parameter of the library, the library name, second parameter of the git URL, and the third parameter of the git tag. And then we're calling fetch content declare, giving it the library name along with the git information for CMake to pull it down. And then we want to use fetch content underscore make available in order to make it available to us. So right after that, we're going to use find package of SDL2 quiet. And if not SDL2 found, so if we don't have it locally, then CMake will use that new function we've just created up here. Include underscore dependency, passing in the necessary SDL2 git information. So as of this recording, I'm pulling the latest 2.30.8 release and then making it available. Okay, now we're doing the same thing to add in the SDL2 underscore image support. So we're using find package for SDL2 underscore image. If not SDL2 image found, then pull down the dependency from GitHub. Same thing with SDL2 underscore TTF. And we have the familiar add executable. Then we want to set up our target underscore include underscore directories with our project name, hello SDL2 with CMake, set it to public. And then we want to include our SDL2 include DIRs, our SDL2 image include DIRs, and the SDL2 underscore TTF include DIRs. Finally, we want to pull everything together with target underscore link underscore libraries. We're going to pass in the project name, then the private flag, and then the necessary SDL2 libraries that we want to link to. And just as a last treat, I came up with this small function here to copy in the necessary SDL DLLs while we're testing out our program here. So we've got a if Win32. So if your platform is Win32, then we're going to be calling this add custom command function with a target here. And then we've got three different commands set up. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be copying from the SDL2 project to our current hello SDL with CMake project. And same thing with the SDL2 image and the SDL2 underscore TTF. So these will handle copying the necessary binary files like those DLL files into our current CMake project. So let's go ahead and run it up. And there we go, there's our main window. Oof, voila. We've got it going with SDL2. We can use escape and it quits everything for us. So stay tuned if you want to know how to do this with SDL3. Okay, here we are setting up SDL3 with CMake lists in C Lion to support either C or C projects using SDL3. Now we're only going to be talking about SDL3 core for the moment. I've noticed that the other packages, SDL image and SDL TTF, along with SDL mixer, don't seem to have the 
3 tagging support in Git yet. So they're just about ready for release, but not quite there yet. Okay, and we're going to be using the new SDL3 callback mechanism, which replaces the long used int main int argc argv entry point that we've had to do for on the Windows platform at least uh, since the beginning of SDL1. There's always kind of been some overrides and a little bit of platform hackery in order to make everything work. So for SDL3, the team decided to implement a callback mechanism instead. And this makes it easier for porting your SDL3 code to other platforms and systems. So we can actually just remove our main file there and let's let's set up the code first and then we'll set up the CMake list file. So we're going to be including SDL3 slash SDL.h and then we'll be including SDL3 slash SDL underscore main dot h. Okay, and then we are going to declare a two pointers to our STL window and STL renderer. Okay, and then we are going to implement the first callback, which is called STL app init. So its function declaration is that it will return a STL underscore app result, and it takes in a avoid star star pointer and our int argc, int argc and char star argv. So this replaces the int main function. And so as you can see here, we're using SDL init along with SDL init video. And if there's an error during, during this initialization, then we return SDL underscore app SDL failure, which means to bail out of your program altogether. And then we're creating a 800 by 450 window using SDL underscore create window and renderer. And again, if we fail, then return SDL app failure. Otherwise, if everything looks good, return SDL app continue. And the next callback that we need to implement is called SDL app iterate. And so this is, this is called once per frame. This is basically an update tick type of function. So this callback has a signature of SDL app result as a return result, SDL app iterate the name, of course, and it takes in a app state as a parameter, a pointer to an app state as a parameter, sorry. So again, we can do with our familiar uh, set render draw color, render clear, render present, and we want to continue. So just return SDL app underscore continue. And we have a app quit callback that we have to uh, that we have to implement so its signature is void sdl underscore app quit and it takes in a app state pointer along a void star app state pointer along with a sdl app result result sdl will clean up the window and renderer for us so we don't need to explicitly destroy them here but anything else that you've created through the lifetime of your application we should properly clean up here and finally, the event loop is contained in a final callback called SDL underscore app event. So it too returns an SDL app result and it takes in a void pointer of the app state and the SDL event pointer. And then all we need to do is check the event. So we can check the event type. If it's a SDL underscore event dot quit, then we return success. Otherwise, if it's a key down event, then we check it to make sure, then we check it to see if the escape key has been pressed. If so, then return app success. Otherwise, just return app continue. And it will go through the loop again. And it will go through the main loop again. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, let's set up the make list file. We have the familiar include dependency function that we created, which again, it uses the fetch content functionality of CMake to pull down the requested library from GitHub and make it available for our project. Okay, so similar to what we've done before, we use find package to look for SDL3 core. And if it's not found, then we call the include dependency function assigning it a library name of SDL3. And here is the git 
git repo and the git tag of the preview 3.1.3. And then we now have it available and let's set up our target include directories with our project name, hello sdl 3 cmake public, and the sdl 3 include dirs that we've now picked up. A little bit of an extra tidbit here is that we need to set a compiler definition for the project of sdl underscore main underscore use callbacks. If we don't want to do it here, then the other thing we can do is back in our main.c, before we include our include files, we could define it here. So I thought it might be a little bit cleaner if we just keep that in the CMake list file, but you can feel free to use it back in your main.c. Okay, and then we can use the familiar target underscore link libraries, hello underscore SDL3 with CMake, private, and then the core of SDL3 colon colon SDL3. Okay, and similar to our SDL2 project, we can use a, a platform flag here. So if win32, then we want to add another custom command to the project target of hello underscore SDL3 underscore with underscore CMake, a post build operation using the command. Basically, we want to copy, copy the target file SDL3, SDL3, which is the SDL3 binary file. And we want to copy it into the project. The current project space. Okay, and let's give it a shot. And here we go, we've got our window for SDL3. Boom shakalaka! I hope you found this video useful. Leave a comment down below if you don't mind, if it worked for you or not, if there's something else I could improve. I left links in the description to the different GitHub gist, fi gist files, which has everything in there that you should be able to just cut and paste into your own projects and get you started. I hope you liked everything and we'll see you in the next video, everyone. Peace.